they know what's coming. These are our Cornish Cross meat birds for uh, well, at least the first batch for the year and they're only about a week old. We put them in here last Wednesday, which means they had been in shipment for maybe two days. So they're maybe eight or nine days old at this point, something like that. And they have already at least doubled in size, probably more. Uh, they grow so fast, it is ridiculous. Check on Broody Judy this morning. Oh, you're still broody, aren't you? You got an egg? Yeah, you got an egg. Thank you. Did I catch you in the act? I think I caught her in the act. I did. Good work. I don't know if y'all can tell, but when they first come out like this, they've got a bloom on them, and that bloom just dries. And you can kind of see it drying right here, and it's still wet. Still wet in this area. So I'll give this just a minute or two to dry while I... Check on the other chickens. You just walked out, didn't you? You gotta go back in. That was my uncle that just came over with a bag of whole corn. He's got ducks and he needed it cracked for his duck. So I was able to run it through my grinder real fast and uh, got that done for him. But now to the point of this video, for anybody who has been watching for any length of time, you've seen the garden in the videos before. And this has been a pretty decent garden. We built it here maybe seven or so years ago and it's done a good job keeping the deer out and growing stuff for us. But it's time to move the garden to a more convenient spot. So this garden has grown a fair amount of food for us. We've had green beans in this area there's a tomato cage tomatoes have been out here we've done squash zucchini corn we've put over on that side we've had flowers over here we've grown lots and lots of potatoes out here but naturally with anything it could stand some improvements and the only way really to improve it is to move it closer to the house so uh, it's it's just kind of in a really inconvenient place it's a fair way mount it's a fair wow it's a fair distance from the house which makes me not as motivated to come work it and another thing is we have to pump water up to it you see it's got a sprinkler system the sprinkler system is breaking down constantly it's gas powered which uses up gasoline and it's uh it, it could be way better so we're going to build some raised beds right here in the yard to do our gardening this year but here's the catch as you can see behind me uh we've got lots and lots of stacks of lumber to move before we can do that this just happens to be the best place to put them and here's the second catch all of this stuff has got to be moved in the next four hours i'm taking my daughter bowling this afternoon and i would like to get this done before that this is the stack we're getting all the lumber for the remodel out of i'm sure i'll end up getting some lumber out of these other stacks for the remodel as well if we run out of that other lumber but let's get to work i got about four hours At a glance, these stacks look pretty rough because the outsides and the edges have kind of been weathered, but there is some really nice lumber in here. This is some nice pine lumber that I can plane down. And uh, I mean, this is really nice, totally usable stuff. Stuff has been stacked here for several years too.
So I had some really unrealistic expectations about how long that was going to take. That took three days. That took three days to do. Not all day. This has been a super busy week, so I hadn't had all day to do this every day. But working just a few hours a day, it still took three days. I had been really concerned that I was going to run out of lumber during the middle of this living room remodel, but I'm really not concerned about this anymore. This is where I moved all of that lumber to, and just a very rough estimate here, it's about 250 boards of various lengths and widths in there so i think i'm going to be good for the for the remodel what you doing up here so here are the boards that we're going to use to build the raised beds out of and i know what you're thinking why are you using untreated pine lumber to do this they're going to rot out in two or three years if you're lucky uh, well i'll explain that later but right now let's get these cut down we're going to cut these down to six inches a piece of the ones that can be cut down to six inches this is a little bit narrow but we're going to cut these down and i'll explain my reasoning on using this stuff uh, here in just a few minutes I'm only going to do four of those for today but i wanted to share with y'all something that i'm really super excited about these were my three inch grip ride exterior screws phillips head and i finally ran out and i'm starting on a bucket of torx heads that makes me so happy let's get some dirt in these things Guys, what I'm really looking for here is some mulch for those garden beds. And I was hoping that this pile right here would have some mulch in it, but it does. Well, there may be some in the middle out there. I'll push it up a little bit and see. But that's kind of what I'm going for is to get some decent composted mulch in that pile, in those boxes. This stuff is really on the way to being some really good mulch one day, but uh, not today, I don't think. It's still got quite a few sticks in it that have not decomposed. Uh, so I'm gonna go another route with this.
just going to use plain old topsoil for this project and where we put the plants i'll put the plants in kind of like a cone or just a hollowed out area with some potting soil in there or garden soil bagged try to get some of this uh, grass out of here so i can at least cut back on the weeds that i'll have to pick out What are you planting? Marigold. What else? Um, I'm going to plant some more sage over there in my sage and basil right here and cilantro right here. So is this last year's stuff right here? Yeah, that is the sage from last year. I'm going to put at least one or two more over here. And then this is oh, a weed. Um, this is last year's oregano. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or not because I didn't really like it. It wasn't what I thought I wanted. It wasn't what I wanted. It's pretty cool that it came back though. Yeah, both of these are perennials. We're gonna put some plants in those beds as well, but uh, kind of the icing on the cake for this whole raised bed idea that I'm doing here is the watering system. I'm gonna put a drip watering system in it so that I won't have to water on top of it all. I think that was one of the big problems with my tomatoes in years past. This is the water that we had on this magnolia tree right here. And this magnolia tree, is pretty big i think the root system is established well enough so we are going to rob this off of this magnolia tree and use it for our raised beds fortunately i've already got water access over here where these garden beds are you see this slab right here this used to be kind of like a workroom there was a big shed over on top of all of this that i got in pretty bad shape and i tore it down a few years ago and my plan um not not in the not in the near future but my plan eventually is to build a little garden shack maybe right on on top of this slab but i'm very very thankful to have water access right here this must be the low point look at what it's doing why did i take the lid off because i'm going to put another lid on it with a faucet on it Do we need to get rid of the double? Yeah, that, that one's gotta go. And we gotta Just get rid of it off. all the little, the lower ones. Mm -hmm. You wanna put it in there? Oh, it's okay. okay. So this is the system, the watering system that we're gonna be using this year. And uh, I had several people comment on my tomatoes in years past. So the tomatoes in my garden get blight every single year and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse as time goes on. And I've had people say, use a drip watering system, get the water to the base of the plants and then your blight problems will be lessened at least. So 
that's one of the reasons that we're moving the garden up here but the main reason is convenience so i'm hoping that this drip watering system is just a rainbird system from home depot hoping this is going to solve our blight problems so basically it's just one of these little drippers here that you stick into the side of this i believe this is the half inch pipe but it's a one gallon per hour dripper in the side of this half inch pipe and it's run out to the plant via Ooh, a quarter inch piece right here and I need a little stake right here they sell little plastic stakes you can put right here so that this tube stays in place I didn't get those I may end up having to we'll see they also sell a little plastic tool to insert these into the pipe with but it was like six dollars and something and I didn't think that was really necessary I might change my mind <sighs> So that wasn't too bad. So Mrs. FLR pointed out there's actually really two factors that are gonna help us out on our tomato blight this year. One of them is this drip watering, uh, drip watering system that's gonna wet the base of the plants and not the entire plant over and over and over again. But different dirt is really important too. The blight harbors in the soil. That fungus harbors in the soil and it gets onto the plants worse year after year i managed to get the hose run through all just about all of the plants it looks like i am gonna have to buy some of those plastic standards i'm improvising right here but i thought that that hose was a lot more flexible than it actually is so these are better boy tomato plants right here this is another better boy down here and there's brussels sprouts over here and basically what i've done here is i've run this hose or this main line up under the ground between right here but not between right there so we'll kind of have aisles right here that may have to change eventually if i end up not liking it it'll probably get in the way but put little sticks in here just to hold these in the right spot for now uh it's got to keep going over here don't you think Mm -hmm. it's got to keep going over here as well but that's not the project for today so let's turn this on and see how it works definitely going to have to invest in those standards the ones that are not at the right angle end up doing this and going where they don't need to go but otherwise it's working really good well guys that was at least a pretty good start the sunlight's pretty rough this time of day but that was at least a pretty good start this is going to be one of those ongoing projects that i just keep working on here and there i need more of these planters these raised beds and they really weren't too difficult to build after i got the raw material cut out it only took 10 to 15 minutes to put the boxes to put each box together so that wasn't really all that bad um I'm sure some of y'all are still wondering why in the world did I decide to use untreated pine lumber to put this together instead of something that'll last a whole lot longer. Well, my initial thought was to use roofing tin. So I actually managed to get some roofing tin. My uncle brought some over. There's a bunch of roofing tin that seems to get shuffled around among the family and it landed on me this time, which is fine. But I got to thinking about it and I thought, uh, you know, this is going to look really bad out in the yard. One of our goals for this project was to clean out this area right here to get these stacks of lumber out of the way and to replace it with something a lot nicer uh, and i didn't think that these big giant corrugated metal tin whatever two feet high boxes were really going to look that great and it was going to take a ton of soil to fill them up as well so i decided against that uh, another thought that i had was to go to home depot and get some of those western cedar fence pickets that they sell and i quickly realized it was going to be very expensive to make all of our boxes out of that stuff and uh, with ground contact i'm i don't really know but i kind of feel like they're not going to last that long either being stuck on the ground like that uh, i thought about using pressure treated stuff but that would have been an astronomical price i could have used pressure treated fence pickets i suppose but i really wanted to avoid using pressure treated stuff for a garden like this uh, i could have used eastern red cedar i've got some but i'm really not willing to use it for this we're saving it for the remodel uh, and there's not a lot of trees that I'm willing to cut down around here that would fit the bill either. So that kind of left me with 
pine and pine is probably the least rot resistant wood out there it's, it's definitely in the top five of least rot resistant woods uh, if you're going to use it outside it's got to be pressure treated because you only get maybe maybe a couple of years maybe three years outside and if you're using it for ground contact uh, if it's in the ground untreated two years and it's going to rot right off at the base termites are especially a problem in my area uh, so and termites just love pine so the reason that i chose to use this was because of price i've got some time some gas and a few screws in this project and that's really it um, once these rot out in i'll probably get two years out of this i'll likely get three years but beyond that i kind of doubt it once these rot out i can take the rotted lumber and mix it into the dirt build a new box around the bed or already formed bed and i'm done it's not a huge deal uh, it takes a little bit of time but not much once the materials are cut out so it really just came down to cost and what i've got and using the stuff that i've got it'll be a little bit more labor won't last as long but I mean, this is, this is kind of the way that I look at it. If I can save $500 on this project, if I make several more beds, this will easily be a $500 project if I had to buy the lumber. So if this is a $500 project uh, and I can build all of these beds in maybe two days, that's like getting paid $250 a day to build garden beds in your yard. So that's kind of the way that I look at it. Um, it. Maybe it just helps me sleep better at night. I don't know, but that's the way that I see it. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching this video. Uh, I will see y'all next time. See y'all on the next one, guys. What you thinking about? I don't know. You look deep in thought. I'm not deep in thought. You're not? No. You thinking about something? Yeah, but I don't know what. Okay.